Sketch f of x is equal to x minus 3 squared over x squared minus 5x. All right, so let's go through the process. Let's find the asymptotes and see what we can do. All right, so notice that the denominator, well, the numerator is factored. The denominator would factor as x by x minus 5. So there's no common factor between the numerator and denominator, so we can go straight to finding the asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes would occur when the denominator is 0, and so that would be when x equals 0 and x equals 5. Horizontal asymptotes, well, horizontal asymptote, notice that the degree of the numerator is 2 and the degree of the denominator is 2, so we take the ratio of the lead coefficients. Uh, lead coefficient, well, if we were to multiply that x minus 3 square out, we'd have an x square, so the lead coefficient is 1. And in the denominator, the lead coefficient is 1, so y equals 1. All right, so we have vertical asymptote. We have, we have two vertical asymptotes. We have a horizontal asymptote, no slant asymptote, because uh, the degree of the numerator is not exactly one more than the degree of the denominator. How about any x-intercepts? x-intercept would occur when the numerator equals 0. So x minus 3 squared equals 0 implies that x equals 3. y-intercept, well, we are, let's see, the y-intercept, well, x cannot equal 0. So there's no y-intercept. So, let's build our framework. Let me redraw this. All right, let's put in our asymptotes. We have a vertical asymptote along the y-axis, and we have 1 at x equals 5. And we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. And we only have one point to go with we have the point at 3, 0. So let's find another point on the curve. At least one or two. Oh, we probably need to find a couple more points on the curve. So let's see what happens if x is a negative number. So how about, uh, what's f of, I don't know, how about uh, negative 2? f of negative 2 would be negative 2 minus 3 squared over negative 2 squared minus 5 by negative 2. So that would be negative 5 squared, that's 25. And that would give us 4 plus 10. 25 over 14. So that's about 1 and a half. So negative 2, about 1 and a half. So we have a point here. So right there, that leads me to believe that the curve is going to do something along like this to begin with. Well, the question comes up, well, does it actually cross that horizontal asymptote? And there's a way to figure out if it crosses the horizontal asymptote. We know the horizontal asymptote occurs at y equals 1, so set the function equal to 1. So let's see what happens there. If I set x minus 3 square over x squared minus 5x equal to 1, that'll tell me if the curve ever crosses the horizontal asymptote. All right, so let me multiply through by the x squared minus 5x, and that implies that x minus 3 squared is equal to x squared minus 5x. x minus 3 squared is x squared minus 6x plus 9. 
and that equals x squared minus 5x. And we can solve this equation for x. Notice the x squares would go away. All right, subtracting that out, that's a 0. And we could write this, if I add 6x to both sides, I find that x equals 9. So what that tells me is that the curve passes through the point 9, 1. So we can cross the horizontal asymptote. And in fact, I know what happens here at 9, 1. Now that's the only point that it crosses the horizontal asymptote. So I know, for example, that it's not going to do this. I'm going to draw this in brown and hopefully, you know, I know it doesn't go below and then come back up because then it must have crossed the horizontal asymptote. And I know that it hasn't done that. So I'm pretty confident about that first part of the curve. Now what about the second, you know, between the asymptotes? Well, I know, I know that when x equals 3, it's not going to pass through but bounce off because I have this x minus 3 squared. So I know it's going to bounce off the x-axis. Well, it can't do this, for example. Because notice that then it crosses the x, uh, it crosses the horizontal asymptote twice. But we know it only crosses the horizontal asymptote once. So I know it can't do that. So I'm left to believe that it must do something like this. I also know that it couldn't cross the x-axis anywhere else because there was only one x-intercept. And I have this other point at 9, 1, where it crosses the horizontal asymptote. Now again, it cannot do this, for example. That would not be good, because then it implies that I have another x-intercept, which I know I don't have. So that only leaves one other option. It's got to come from the top, pass through that point, go below the horizontal asymptote, and then come back up to the horizontal asymptote. And so here's a rough sketch of the curve f of x equals x minus 3 squared over x squared minus 5x.